The Minister for Education is set to go before Parliament this week and uh, present a bill that will bind successive governments to continue with the free SHS policy. But we ask, is the free SHS policy in its current state sustainable? Is the bill necessary in light of Ghana's 1992 constitutional mandates for a progressively free education? We're going to be interrogating those issues, but let's first take you to the floor of Parliament where the majority leader, Alexander afinio uh, spoke to some of the crucial issues. The Minister of Education will present uh, the free SHS bill to Parliament. You know, the Chapter 5 of, of the Constitution provides some aspirational, aspirational indicatives. Um, those are not justiciable. But once by policy of government, an aspiration as envisaged by the Constitution is put into action, then to make it justiciable, you enact. Um, in other words, there are provisions in the Constitution that you cannot enforce. You cannot claim rights to those provisions. The fact that they are there does not mean that you can apply to the court to enforce those rights. They are merely should I enforce certain rights and give rights and take certain actions. So I think that this free SHS bill, if we consider as a house, what that means is that it becomes mandatory for government to implement this. Unless it is repealed, no government would have the right to say, I am not going to enforce free SHS. Because now there is a law. So if you fail, a citizen can apply to the court as his bona fide, and the court would exact justice in that citizen's favor. So that is the, the, the good news about this uh, bill. So here we go talking about education. I am joined in the studio by Sweetie uh, Abochi, who is also here together with Peter Nochu uh, Koto joining uh, the conversation. But we also have joining the conversation uh, George Tokuo Dro here is Professor of Educational Leadership at the University of Cape Coast. Uh, Prof, good morning. Good morning, my brother. It's, it's good having you join uh, the conversation this okay. morning. I will Thank ask you. for it your initial thoughts on this matter. I mean, I have heard uh, the likes of Angel Kabonu saying free SHS legislation, make it more effective. No one has challenged the legality. But from the constitutional standpoint, uh, is this even a conversation we should be having? Thank you very much. Yeah, and greetings to uh, listeners, viewers. Yeah, um, it is uh, difficult uh, for me to make a definite pronouncement on this intended bill because the details are not known yet. However, I wonder which of the three SHS the intended bill seeks to sustain. Is it the constitutionally mandated progressive free SHS, which the NDC properly planned and commenced implementing prior to its exit in 2016? Or the vote buying triggered and poorly implemented post free SHS, which has crippled conditional education in the country. We need to know. If the trigger of the intended bill is to counter the call for review by civil society and other forward looking stakeholders in the country, then I think the NPP isn't being honest with that yet. And therefore, the intended bill has no basis. Why do I say this? 
When we look at the IMF report mm. in January 2024, report number 24 to 30 point 47, the NPP, as part of its strategies, indicated that in the educational sector, we will review and rationalize the free SHS program. So if that is what the promise that the NPP itself, the Minister of Education, and the Vice President have assured the IMF of, then going forward to next, uh, next uh, year, why should they rush to come out with a bill to the explanation that they want the implementation of the free agenda to be sustained? Sustained. For me, I think that it is a political gimmick aimed at um, <laughs> both buying because the impression has already been created. They have tried to create the impression that the end is intended review of the implementation of the free existence implies cancelling, cancellation, which people have not bought into because even the JHS child knows that review does not mean cancellation. And so the intended bill, in my opinion, is to create an impression because obviously and uh, the minority in parliament obviously will kick against the bill. So the signal will go out to people that, yes, you see, if NDC comes, they will cancel the, the free exit. That is why uh, they don't want to accept that. So my concern, my, my, what I would say is that if the NDP's intended bill is really in the interest of the nation, then the Minister of Education or Minister of Education would have heeded to the persistent call on the NPP for a national dialogue on the free education, which has come from civil society and the former president, so that we look at the implementation, identify the gaps, a find ways of addressing the gaps so that we move forward. Then based on that, we can think about a bill to sustain its implementation. Okay. If that is not done, mm. my brother, I can assure you, even if they force to push this bill to be passed in parliament, its sustenance will not be assured. Because in that government, who thinks more about the nation and thinks about quality implementation of the free education as provided in the constitution will surely cause a repeal of, 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 the, of the law. Let me also mention that we have precedents in this country where act establishing institutions, provisions made in institutions, I'm looking, talking about a tertiary level, where the act clearly indicates how a vice chancellor should be appointed. Statute clearly indicates that. And yet the MPP, and majority leader was active in that, they put aside those and then remove a vice chancellor at the University of Education in and appointed a new vice chancellor without recourse to the act. So there is no assurance that if this bill is pushed through parliament and it passes, the next government will be compelled to go by it. What we need is a national dialogue. So we'll all be on the same plane to ensure that free entities becomes meaningful to the poor, particularly the poor in the society. So my, my brother, this is my opinion about, about it. I, I have follow-up questions, but um, before I do, Sweetie Abochi, my colleague, is in the studio. Uh, she has some yeah. questions for you as well. Brother, okay. I was just thinking, you talk about, you know, the constitution and what it's the directive about progressively free. Would you agree that this bill, the proposed bill, can be rather interpreted as an enhancement of this constitutional directive. I mean, we're moving from progressively realizing this dream to actually solidifying it to ensure that 
everyone has access to education. Mind you that one thing that this policy has done is given lots of school going, um, school going, lot of children access to education. So wouldn't it rather be an enhancement of this constitutional directive from progressively free to actually solidifying this policy into a law? What do you think about that? Yeah, thank I mean, you very much. The politics aside, I mean. Yeah, enhancement. No, I, actually, I'm not talking politics. I'm talking academic analysis. Yes. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, enhancement, yes. But let's not forget that free, progressively free as provided by the Constitution is not skewed to access. It is skewed to quality and equity index access. It is also framed within the context of scarce resources, bearing in mind the various levels of our educational sector where the basic, basic education becomes the prioritized um, need because without strengthening the foundation, the basic, whatever you put up create, becomes problematic. So in enhancing, coming out with any intended bill aimed at enhancing the constitutional provision, Within the context of wholesale, we must ask ourselves, has the nation reached the, the point where the nation can provide free SHS for everybody, including those who can pay for their children, to the extent that PTA, parent teacher association support has to be crippled, to the extent that parents will be told not to pay anything and yet behind the scenes so much cost is, is, is being placed on parents to the extent that other sectors of the economy have to be suppressed mm. to the extent that endowment funds like the guest fund should be cut and collateralized by sister. We need enhancement must be done within the context of critical analysis, okay. within the context of our resources. That is what we need. So the intention may be good, but they should come out clearly to tell us what, what is going into that. And so that is done, I still hold on to my position that it will be a political gimmick aimed at winning votes. Prof, so two blunt questions, very briefly. One, okay. are you saying then that before this bill would have been brought to any consideration, it sh there should have been a review, one, of free SHS? That's the first bit. That even before considering this, there should have been a proper review of free SHS involving all other sides, including, for example, people who feel there is the need for a review. Like you cited, even in the IMF document, we had said that we would review and rationalize free SHS. Is that what you're saying? Surely, that's what we are saying. Because the free SHS is for the nation. Mm. It is for stakeholders. It is for the taxpayer. We have implemented the program um, since 2017, we are all aware of the challenges associated with this. Yes, we think that it is a good program, but its implementation is an issue. Before you come up with any bill aimed at enhancing or sustaining us, there should be engagement. All political parties with different opinions, everybody must, must come together to look at it. Such things right. Then now we can come out to say that we need a bill in parliament to be passed to enhance its implementation, to ensure that any government that comes in will work towards that. If that is not done, <laughs> then you are only, you know, I don't know, I don't want to use the word joking. Yeah, but I think that we've gotten to a stage as a nation where we do not have to toil with our educational system.
Are, are you then saying that at this point, this bill will not be a technical bill? It will be a political bill? Oh, sure. It, 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 it is obvious. Okay. Obvious. Right. The, yeah. the second bit to you, just, just briefly on that. So, free SHS in its current frame or form, should it be continued and be made binding on future governments? What do you think? In its current form, uh, as a professor in educational leadership, I wouldn't support any move that seeks to sustain and consolidate mediocrity in terms of quality, in terms of equity. So within this context, I would not subscribe to anything of that. If it were just a question of access, oh, then that one time, that is good. But once quality and equity are concerned, I don't think it would be in the interest of the nation. It wouldn't be in the interest of the poor people in this country who need, who also need quality education. All right, please hold for us. Let's come back into the studio and engage our member of parliament on this same issue. Now, like he was saying, there are some political powers at play here and you know, educational policies, especially those affecting large populations like this particular free SHS, is subject to manipulation. Often, each party wants to get something out of it, right? We've heard former President John Dramani Mahama say that he wants to review it. And there's the fear that he might want to completely take it out of um, operation. So my question to you is, will this bill not rather remove the, politi the politicking aspect of it and rather just focus on ensuring that senior high school education is accessible to all, regardless of um, their background? Yeah, thank you very much. Um, my first answer to your question is uh, emphatic no. Okay. Now, there are constitutional provisions. If you go to Article 25, 1B, and I quote, secondary education in its different forms, including technical and vocational education, shall be made generally available and accessible to all by every appropriate means, and in particular, by the progressive introduction of free education. And that was what started in 2015 under the uh, regime of President uh, Mahama. 2015-2016, we started the free SHS on progressively free approach. Mm. That is the first thing. Now, if you come to the implementation uh, of the program, we asked even the government at the time of the uh, introduction or implementation that we want to see a policy document on the free SHS uh, program or policy. Mm. As we sit here, government or the Ministry of Education has never been able to provide the Committee on Education a copy of the policy. So whether it existed or not, I don't know. Have you requested for We it? requested several times. What response did you get? They will get it for you. We'll get it for you. That is all. Wait, I wait, don't know just, whether just, it is the just, policy just, that just, just stay with us here. You're saying there is no policy yeah. framework yeah. on free SHS. As far as I'm concerned, I've not seen a copy. You are ranking member on the Education yes, Committee of Parliament. I, I you don't know you, of any such policy. I have not seen a copy of it. We have insisted as a committee, we want a copy. Neither the, former, uh, the last former minister or the current one provided us with a copy. Now, they want to legislate the phrase, yes, but I can tell you that there is already a provision for it in the law existing in this country, so, apart from the Constitution, Act, uh, Act 1049, Pre-Tertiary Education Act 2020. I was part of the committee that worked on it. And if you look at Section 3, let me quote, free secondary education. Secondary education is different forms, including technical and vocational education, shall be free and accessible to all eligible candidates. Mm -hmm. So what again do you want to uh, pass as a law? Because it is here already. So are they coming to amend Article 10, uh, what, Act 1049? I don't know for them. I want to go back to the earlier do? quote you did about yeah. the progressively free from 2015-2016. Yeah. If we are talking progressively free, it means that at some point in time, it will be free. So how much longer do we have to wait and review policies until we get to the point that it's actually free? The constitution has not given any time frame, unlike the free basic education. Mm. Now, 
if you look at it, when they talk of a progressively free, it's talking about the quality that we should give. You see, if you look at the quality of secondary education in this country now, it's very poor. Look at the challenges that are bedeviling the free senior high school program. And I can go through a number of them for you. And you'll be surprised that, you no, know, we need to look at this uh, phrase just positively mm. and then criti critique it and see where we have not done well. And then we can go ahead. Yeah, just a quick one. What is your interpretation of progressively free? Progressively free, that means you must take your time and make sure that you provide the necessary facilities that are needed. Number one is infrastructure. Take your time is relative. You know that. Yeah, it's relative. But you must take your time. What are the things that you need to provide quality education at the free senior high school? So if you remember, in 2015, President Mahama embarked on a, a large-scale infrastructure in our secondary schools. And that was the first approach. And if he had continued in office, I think these challenges we are facing in the senior high schools now, when you go and then you park uh, students in the dormitories, in the classrooms, then you have to introduce a double track system where the students now go on as if it's a traffic uh, light. Some will, as we speak now, second, some of second year students are at home. They will go back to school in uh, June. They will stay on holidays for every two months. It right. is not the best. Okay. Right. So Professor Stephen Kwekwa there joins us. He's the former director um, of GIMPA. Professor, it's good to have you join us. This proposed bill to turn this free SHS policy into a law, how does it all sit with you? I'm sure you've been following the conversation to this point. Give me a sense of your thoughts. Well, the question is that, uh, first of all, the CHS, the CSHS has appeared not only in the Constitution and also in some of the... Prof, your voice is a bit this. down. Please, if you could speak up for... Okay. Yeah. Is it better now? Yes, we can hear you. Yes. I said that in addition to the constitutional provision, by virtue of the legislation which the Honorable uh, Member of Parliament referred to, every year there is some policy coming through the budget because there are budgetary allocations for free SHS. So there is some policy. But there, that has not been articulated. And I think that pulling it all together so that we know all the facets of uh, SHS, what is included and what is not included in the free SHS, will be a good idea. And so I think that it's something which is coming, I think, a bit late, but it's worth doing it so that there will be an articulation of really the dimensions of the free SHS, whether it is free or boarding and everything else. And also, it will give Parliament an opportunity to really discuss if the NDC has any better way of doing it. That is the time they can ask for amendments. I think that it is good if the government at last has come to the point of bringing uh, a legislation it will give both sides the opportunity to debate the free SHS, free SHS, the strengths and weaknesses, and codify it. Uh, Professor Day, I, I have a question for you, but let me quickly um, welcome aboard Dr. Peter Ante. He's the executive director of IFEST. Uh, Dr. Ante, a very good morning to you. Hello, Dr. Ante. All right, I'll go back to Dr. Ante shortly. Hello, but, good morning. Um, Dr. Antti, good morning. Hope you're well. Hello, good morning. All right, Doc, just, just hold a second. I'll come to you shortly. Uh, Professor Ade, so you talk about art articulation, if you like, of the idea, but what exactly will be articulated? Uh, free SHS has been bedeviled with so many problems. Good, but implementation, problems. The government itself, in its agreement with the IMF, has spoken about reviewing and rationalizing the policy. That has not been done. So what exactly is going to be discussed? Uh, Peter Nochukoto in the studio, together with uh, Professor Toku Odro, say that it is, it is wrong, Abednisio. You've not dealt with the issues. You're going to Parliament to do what exactly? What's your take? Well, I don't think that, for example, 
there hasn't been a, a clear definition to me. What is the government going to offer? And what, even on the free SHS, parents should do? And I think that there has been some discussion in the air about these things. And I hope that the policy and the law would make this clear. Because if we don't, then we will be prodding along with all the arguments and discussions which have been devil the created as to now. Hold for me, Prof. Um, Dr. Pitanti is still on the line with us. Doc, are we misprioritizing these <clears throat> issues? Are we supposed to be focusing on reviewing the policy, ensuring that the challenges we've seen, I mean, even despite the challenges, there was the introduction of this one student, one tablet, and we talked a lot about how there are challenges, there are still schools and the trees. Should we be focusing on fixing these issues rather than implementing a law or solidifying this progressively free senior high school um, thing that we're trying to do? What's your take? Dr. Antti, are you with us? Okay, it appears we have some challenges with the connection uh, as far as uh, Dr. Peter Antti uh, is concerned. Uh, we'll, we'll try to look at some of the other surrounding matters. And, and so for you, Professor Ade, before we get back to uh, Dr. Antti, you, you feel that, okay, I hear, I hear we have Dr. Right. Antti back. Dr. Antti, I was asking, should we be focusing on fixing the challenges we have in education, particularly with senior high school education, rather than, you know, moving this policy into a law? Uh, I don't think we have Dr. Pitanti or the network challenges, but when we... Hello, I'm here. Okay, great, uh, good great, great. Good morning. Can you hear me? Yes. Did you hear the question? Is this a case uh, of my challenges, but I right? I'll repeat it. Is this I a case? Rest. Is this a case of misplaced priorities? Should we be focusing on fixing the challenges we have in the education system, particularly with the senior high school, rather than moving this policy into a law? All right. Uh, th thank you very much, and good morning. I I'm having a terrible network this morning. Yes, uh, I, I think that, I don't know if this point I've already made on, on your platform, that um, we have made free SHS uh, law in this country, and that is has to sit in the Pre-Tertiary uh, uh, Education Act uh, 2020. So I'm, I'm looking at a situation whereby we are likely to have the operationalization of the policy being enacted into law. And that is, that is where I'm a little bit uh, skeptical. But we'll wait and read the content of the so-called bill, and then we'll be able to make inputs. There are a lot of challenges in the education sector, especially at the secondary school level, at the secondary level. And we're thinking that if there, if there are any um, plans uh, to, 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 to deal with them, the focus should be on trying to solve these problems and, and, and make sure that uh, the, the benefits of assessing secondary education in Ghana is realized. But as I said, it's, it's a little bit interesting to hear that there is going to be a bill on free SHS. I see it to be more of the operationalization of the law that has already been enacted. And I'm thinking of how this whole thing is going to be like. So. We would wait and see the contents of that particular bill and, 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 and give uh, the necessary remarks when, when the time is due. But the focus should be trying to deal with the challenges that we are facing now for the many months of, of this current administration. Uh, Peter, I have an interesting point for you. Uh, George Toko Drew, he's professor of educational leadership at the University of Cape Coast. He has asked whether we are going to have the bill talking about the SHS of the NDC uh, period, or at least that which is referenced in the Constitution, or this current SHS, which has been bedeviled with its own uh, problems. Mind you, it's confusing because 
if we are to go by what Peter Lochukoto, ranking member of the Education Committee of Parliament, says, there is no policy framework even for free SHS, at least not what he has seen. No policy framework. So what exactly will we be implementing? Dr. Anti, that was meant for you, if you can hear me. Uh, it's, it's, it's a bit challenging uh, this morning, but, but maybe I'll throw that question uh, to Professor Ade, if you heard the question, before we, go back, we come back uh, to Dr. Yes. Anti and then in the studio. Yes, I heard it. I heard it. Mm. First of all, politicians are always hyperbolic in their view. Mm. I think that to say that there's no policy covering free SHS is just being economical with the truth. He has been sitting in parliament and has been passing budgetary allocation to free SHS on what basis? No, the, what he's saying is that they haven't brought probably a comprehensive law that covers it. And that is exactly what I expect this supposed law, which we can discuss it because I don't know the content, should do. And it should be welcomed by everybody because for the first time, there will be an opportunity once they bring anything to parliament, mm. not only for the parliamentarians, but the education subcommittee to sub sub solicit views of experts and interested parties. And therefore, as much as I have no clue to what is being presented, for me, it will be an opportunity for Ghanaians to have a platform to discuss the way forward for the free SHS. And I think they shouldn't be, and we shouldn't be discussing whether they should <laughs> fix the problems now rather than the law. No, it gives a, a platform for all of us to be able to see what the government has on the table and to be able to criticize it or give recommendations and for Parliament to treat it to make it better. And it should be the desire. I thought that both sides of Parliament should welcome whatever is coming. Whether it's good or bad, you have opportunity to see what is happening in Dodoa Forest. Uh, in, interesting submissions. Prof, hold, hold for me. Let's just take a reaction from Peter Lochukoto on that. You've heard Professor Ade on, on, on that point. Uh, what do you make of it, his reaction? past uh, seven years under this uh, government. Mm. And consistently, we have been asking for a copy of the policy. And I know on record that any time we met at a budget session and we're discussing allocations for various sectors, we requested for this, and we have never been given a copy. So based on what did you approve the, the allocation? Well, it's, like a, prof, it's, it's justifiable. It's a budgetary, it's if there's a, no policy, you don't know what you were signing off on. No, we, Why we were have, you approving budgets? No, we have an education ministry. They come with their budget. This is how much we want to spend on basic education. This is how much we want to spend on uh, secondary education. This is how much we want to spend on tertiary education. You see it. So we have all that. And when it comes to senior high school, we demand for policy documents. And they have never given us. So what we do is, okay, this is how much you want to use for the free senior high school policy. Okay, it's granted. And if you will remember, we have been asking the minister even some time ago over how much they have spent in respect of this uh, free senior high school program. And they give us conflicting figures. The minister for education will give a, a figure. The, Minister for Finance will give a different figure, and then government itself will also give a different figure. So at times we become worried and confused as to what actually uh, is happening within the operation or the implementation of the Free Senior High School program. So it is not that we don't want uh, the policy or the bill to be brought to parliament, but we want to make the people of Ghana know that we have made demands on this government for a number of issues concerning the policy, and they have not told us. Even with the school calendar, free senior high school, when they introduced the uh, double track system, we requested for a timetable within which they would do away with the double track because we saw it as a 
greatest challenge because it was going to distort the school calendar altogether. And they promised us, oh, by 2018 or 2019, it will be over. We are now in 2024. And we still have the double track system. Right. Mm. Wow. We have the president of Ghana National Association of Teachers, uh, Mr. Isaac Ousu, joining us. Mr. Isaac Ousu, thanks for joining the conversation. Now, Dr. Peter Anti is saying that we should be focusing on fixing the challenges that we already have. Um, the ranking member on Education Committee in Parliament is in the studio with us. He's saying that they haven't even seen a policy document or a, you know, a comprehensive policy framework. What do you say on this proposed bill to turn the free SHS policy into a law? Well, let me say a very good morning to your good self and the panel members in your studio, and also to your cherished uh, viewers this morning. And I must say that, yes, I think uh, it is better late than ever, because since uh, 2017 that the MPP government started the implementation of the free SHS policy, we were expecting this discussion to have started as far back as 2017-2018. But we, 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 we do not know the reason why this is the time that they realized that we need to enact a law that will help us implement the Article 25 in our Constitution. Yes, it is good. Because we have precedents in Ghana where a political party comes to government and decides to take the free secondary school to four years. Another party comes and says, no, we will not do the four years. We will revert it back to three years. Because there were no laws or an enactment binding successive governments, people try to play politics with our educational system. So for me, I think that, yes, it is very important for us to have an enactment that would direct the successive government as to how we should go about this free secondary school policy. Yes, this does not stop us from a, having a national dialogue on how to have a very quality education, a holistic quality education in the country. So for me, I think that as parliamentarians, they need to look at the policy and the bill that is here to come to them for them to look at it critically to help us as a nation because we are we are tired as policy implementers here i'm referring to teachers mm. that any time successive government come because the promises were made on partisan politics basis to their manifesto they decide to do things anyhow but if there are enactment and laws that binds us then we can all to collectively make sure that whichever government that comes to power will do the right thing. Because you remember, even in this Article 25, uh, I quite remember, I think it's PPP or CPP, uh, Kabila's party or so, they went to court. And, and, and the court to the Supreme Court to their case away because some of the articles in the constitutions are not justiciable, as they can be reference cases in, at the Supreme Court. So for me, and the teachers, we feel that we should have a law that would direct policy holders, that will help all stakeholders to know the clear direction that we are going as a nation. Okay, so Mr. Wusu, quick one. Benjamin here. In, in essence, two, two quick questions. That means, one, you agree that there is no policy document, no proper policy framework for free SHS. Exactly. Because all, all the other policies that we refer to uh, the Peter Sherry Act made mention of some aspect of the free secondary school. But we do not have a holistic enactment that is talk talking solely on how the pros and cons of the policy. So it is very important for us to have such uh, laws so that we can all together make sure that if any party comes to power and there is need for us to do certain amendments, then they said that government can fall on whatever is there to make the necessary amendment. Okay, now, now let's talk about this. How relevant is it 
we are in the dying embers of this administration. Even if the MPP continues with, let's say, their flag bearer, Dr. Baumia, who knows how he may want to implement free SHS. But how relevant will this bill be now in terms of the dying embers where we are and foisting this on the people of Ghana and subsequent governments? That is one. And taking stock of the fact that already we have committed with the IMF to reviewing and rationalizing free SHS. We've not done that. Yet we are jumping the gun and saying we're going ahead with a bill. Does that add up for you? This is where the members of parliament need to help us as citizens. I said initially that I am surprised that this is the time that the MPP government wants to introduce this bill. Because you started the policy as far back as 2017. And from 2017 to date, the MPP party has been in power. And we do not know. That is why I am saying that we, we will need the work of the members of parliament to scrutinize the bill. Because they, they are the only people that can help us to know the rationale behind the introduction of this bill. Then you and I are not in parliament. And we have not even cited the, 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 the proposed bill. So we are expecting our members of parliament, both sides, to do a thorough work to let us know the rationale behind this bill. Because if you wonder it, you, you go to IMF and tell them that you review. And then in another bit, now you are bringing a proposed policy, a proposed bill to parliament. So I think we, this is a time that we will need our parliamentarians to do us a human job, to let us know the rationale behind this proposed bill. Okay, let me take the conversation back to Professor Tokodro. Prof, let's talk about the yields of free senior high school. We know that one, it's given lots of school children access to education. Among the other things, this bill seeks to bind successive governments to continue giving this accessibility of education to children of the country. We can review laws as we go forward. Would it be too bad to make it a law and then continuously or progressively review it until we have a good framework or a good law that will benefit the nation as a whole? <laughs> you, you see, when you do not have, uh, yeah, excuse me, when you do not have any point of reference, then you can go the trial and error model. You can go that way. Now, let, let me say that there is no controversy over the free component of the free SHS. The controversy is about the implementation. And even before the government decided to implement they were cautioned. Even some members of the MPP, I can make reference to the former finance minister, uh, Okuriata. He cautioned that it should not be across board. He even went ahead to say he could pay for about six people. We had other people also who cautioned. So we have a reference point. We know the challenges. Why would we want to enact law and then progressively address the challenges as we implement. I don't think it is proper. Now, uh, let me also say that governments change politics, uh, sorry, policies, not because the laws, there is no law. It is because the mode of coming out to such policies do not create a sense of Collective ownership. Collective ownership. And that is why it is very, very important that even before you think about sending any bill to parliament, you would have created a platform for all stakeholders, representatives, parents, students, uh, the pol all political parties, everybody to engage with the issue. Now the core challenge we have is the implementation. So there is this bill 
Once there's no controversy with the free SHS itself, and the controversy of the implementation is that they're going to tell us that whether you like it or not, because there's a bill that when you come, neglect a basic education and focus on free SHS. Do not limit free SHS to only the poor. Even those who can uh, 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 pay, give it to them. Uh, is that what we want to, the tangent we want to go? I don't think that for the sake of planning, and if we are working in the interest of the nation and to the poor people of this country, we should rush to enact a law when we have not engaged stakeholders to address challenges. So we can get a content of a bill that will be accepted by all. Unless that is done, the fear of every government coming in a changing will continue. Okay, Let so, us not haste. Right. Let's engage stakeholders. On the issue of With the clash... Note, I want to seek permission. I have to write for another program. Right. Do you, do you have one minute just to get um, okay. some clarification from me? On the clash of an already existing law and what yeah. this, you know, the Minister of Education seeks to do now, what is your definition of progressively free education as it already exist, is, is existing in our constitution? Oh, okay. Thank you. Um, yeah, the enacted, the enactors of the constitution obviously looked at resources to support initiative, the free. Mm. Uh -huh. Taking in consideration the various financial demands that other sectors of the economy, even within the education sector, various levels of the uh, of, uh, of operation costs will have on the national coffers. And that is the context within which, in my opinion, the progressively free education uh, was provided. So All right. If we think we have gone to a stage where we cannot make it whole for everybody, whether they're rich or the poor, which from experience for what is happening now is not the case, then we can come out, a bill, come out with a bill. I would have wished that we have seen the content of the bill saying that the progressively free education will be amended to read progressively free education for the needy in the country. Thank you for those thoughts. Um, Professor George Tokudro, you can take leave of us now. And he's, um, professor, he's a professor of educational leadership at the University of Cape Coast, and he, he joined us. Let me come back to Mr. Nochituku. Kotu. Kotui. Kotui. Yes. Yeah. What do you want out of all these conversations that we're having right now? What do you want? Well, uh, for me, the decision to come to Parliament with a bill is a misplaced priority. Misplaced priority because there are a lot of challenges now facing the free senior high school program. Mm. As we sit here, government is owing WAEC over 224 million Ghana cities mm. for the conduct of examinations. For this year, those who are going to write the WASE in uh, August, government has not released even one CD to WAEC to organize the examination. They are supposed to give WAEC 178 million Ghana cities. They have not given one peswa. 2023, they are owing over 46 million Ghana cities to WAEC. 2022, they are owing over 9 million Ghana cities to WAEC. As for basic education, we won't talk about that because they owe them well over 90 million. And WAEC is losing seasoned examiners because of this. Because they will not, examiners will not go and then uh, review scripts, uh, mark scripts, set questions, do all other things, and then you won't pay them on time. You see, so WAEC is worried that if the trend should continue this way, then they are going to uh, have problems with the conduct of the examination. Because you said, as part of the free senior high school, program, no student or candidate should pay even a pesua 
for the registration of the Zara. The government will pay everything. You, we have approved this budget for you. Give it to them to conduct the examinations. You don't want to do it. Now you want to come with a bill. Is the bill going to solve this problem? Or you are going to put in the bill that henceforth, any government that takes over must not owe a egg. Or must not owe uh, publishers. Is that what you just said? That but you've approved the budget, but they've not dispensed the Yes. Policy? We approved budget since uh, October last year, starting from January. And as I'm saying, arrears of last year, was it? 46 million is there. Government has not paid. So WIC is going around begging suppliers uh, or for materials on credit. Mm. So it's making the work of WIC very, very difficult. You have not uh, thought of uh, solving that problem. You now owe uh, one what, student one laptop. You have not paid even a dollar. You are owing the supplier $337 million. Instead of thinking of how to pay that money, and even today you say you are going to distribute the tablets at Okokua, the secondary school. Something you have bought on credit. You have not paid for it. You have bought food and fed the students on credit. You have not paid. Instead of thinking of that, you say you want to bring a bill. A bill to do what? You see, the issue, issue is that you cannot pass a law uh, and make it uh, entrenched on any government because these uh, laws uh, cannot surpass what is in the Constitution. So they should rather think of amending the Constitution rather than uh, passing a law because there is a law already, Act 1049, Section 3, making okay. uh, the free SES policy. Yes. You are ranking member on Parliament's Education Committee. Yes. How do you proceed from here? Are you going to what, reject the bill? What's the way forward? Well, I don't know what the bill is intended to do, but let's see how it comes out. But for me, it is not necessary. It's going to be a waste of parliamentary time because we have it here. Go and solve the problems, bedeviling the system. And when you have solved them, come out with a policy that we can also. But, but that means you're going to oppose it. You're going well, to oppose it when it's laid yeah, before parliament. You like will oppose this, it. Like this very bill uh, uh, act I have here, 1049, when uh, Honorable Prempe brought it to parliament, and we went to, as a committee to discuss it. I told him I would take this matter to court. So just clarify, the NDC will oppose this bill when it's laid before Parliament? I, what I'm saying is I'm going to look at the content. But for me, now it is not a necessity. Let's look at the, con the challenges and solve them. Okay, so let yeah. me ask you. So the bill must not, come. Not the NDC, you. As Peter me, Nicole, for me, it is not necessary. You, you, and you I, and it. I know the minority will share the same view with me. You will oppose it? Yes. Okay. Uh, and opposing it... You see, it is an agenda by the government mm -hmm. that they are going to put in the public domain. Mm -hmm. That, oh, you see, we want to make the free SGS better. NDC is opposing it. That is what they intend to do. We right. know. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, do, do we have Dr. Anti before we just wrap with uh, Professor Stephen Ade? Because Dr. Anti has not. Okay, we, we've lost Dr. Peter Anti. Professor Stephen Ade, uh, final thoughts on this matter? What's the way forward? Well, as for. <laughs> Politicians, I don't know. They are different well altogether. I, we don't. I don't know, and nobody knows what is in the so-called so bill to be put in Parliament. Every bill will have the reasons and the policies as preamble, and as a result of that, what is going to be done. I am interested in seeing what they are going to put in Parliament. Because as soon as they put it in Parliament, then all of us, both not only the parliamentarians, have the right to submit our own memoranda as to what can be done. And it takes it away from the bosom of the government to the public domain. And I think that this is what we should, if they are coming out, let them come out so that we will all have opportunity. But this advance possible rejection and saying that we'll solve all problems, then we must all be dead because you are saying that we shouldn't do anything about health until we have solved all problems in health. About mining, I mean, that is a good argument. I believe that whatever the law is, if it comes out, it will give some of us an opportunity to know what the government is thinking about, what they were putting forward, then we will either ask them to be treated, opposed, or rejected. So I support whatever it is. I'm looking forward to seeing what is in it. And I won't comment on it one way or the other until I have seen it. You can't say that because they owe Wayek, they shouldn't 
do a policy on uh, free SHS. This are totally, to me, it's a, the logic to me is unfounded. Yes, they must address those problems. But you say that until you have addressed those problems, don't bring the law, don't bring the policy. We need how to know from them how they are going to deal with these problems and what law they are going to make it binding. And in any case, a law, not a constitution, can be amended by another government. So we shouldn't waste our time on these peripheral political discussions. Let us see the bill. Let us see what is in it so that some of us can make specific comments for the good of Ghana. So far, it is in the bosom of the government. And <laughs> Thank you, Prof. Thank you uh, for those yeah, uh, submissions. And that is uh, Professor Stephen Ade. He is a former rector of uh, the Ghana Institute of Management and Public Administration. He joined... Uh, the conversation as well. I believe we also have, uh, let me just Isaac check. Isaac Owusu. Isaac Owusu, yes. Um, the Ghana National Association of Teachers. What will be your final thoughts, uh, Mr. Owusu? Uh, I think uh, going forward, we are expecting our members of parliament to look at the proposed bill and then let the key stakeholders know what is in there to get our input because as i stated earlier on if we do not have an act directing us as a state on how we should go about this free teachers policy tomorrow we will sleep and wake up and somebody will say that there is no need for this thing. Let's throw it away. It has happened before in the country. So for us as teachers, what we want is a lasting solution to the challenges confronting us in the educational front. That's all that we are seeking for the powers that be. Thank you, Mr. Owusu. Uh, he is president of the Ghana National Association of Teachers. We're grateful to you too, uh, Peter Nochu. I've always been calling you Koto. You say it's uh, Kotwe. Yes. Okay, so Peter. The E is not, not silent. Mm. Kotwe. Yeah. Okay. I guess I'm Frenchifying you know, <laughs> yes. Peter Nochu Kotwe, yeah. a ranking member on the Education Committee of Parliament. <laughs>